So recently, Behavior has released some statistics on the most used perks in Dead by Daylight. And surprisingly, the most used perks for Survivor are self-care, dead hard, and windows of opportunity. A lot of people were freaking out because they also released the escape rate value and the average escape rate was 39%. People were blaming the lower escape rate due to self-care being the most used perk in Dead by Daylight. So many would ask the question, should we stop using these perks because our, the escape rates are so low? Are we throwing our games by running some of these perks? The previous escape rate was 47%. Now it's 39%. That is a massive dip. And I want to I wanna go through every single perk one by one to answer that very question in the case of self-care there are a lot of archive quests currently that actually require self-care matter of fact behavior made an archive quest requiring people to only use self-care in their kit and some people have often blamed me for <laughs> the spike in self-care use due to my bite the bullet self-care compilation showcasing a build with a video named self-care is a bad perk and some people may think dude you guys need to stop using self-care you're making the games you're throwing the games for your entire team that that is kind of true to some degree if you use self-care in the corner of the map and you heal for about 40 seconds just you know in the corner hugging yourself humping the wall 40 seconds you're not doing any gens you're not doing a chase you might as well get a heal from a teammate because it's much faster um, in comparison to using self-care. But I think the major attribution to the high use in self-care is not due to people crutching on it, but due to the fact that there are so many archive quests requiring such, which in turn will lower the average escape rate. So once people get their archive quests done, the escape rate will go up a little bit more. In the case of Dead Hard, Dead Hard is an outstanding perk. It's really good, but it's extremely hard to use. You need to time it for when the killer hits you. It's like dodging a Dark Souls boss hit. Time it perfectly. Parry the hit. I play at High Mamar. I see people use Dead Hard and Sprimper, and they dodge my hatchets like crazy. It is still very, very good if you can time it properly. But since Dead Hard is so hard to use, you may see people getting downed more due to improper timing or due to the skill curve of dead hard itself do i think people should stop running this perk no it's just kind of a hard perk to use since you can't use dead hard for distance anymore you can only use it to take a hit or of invulnerability also it creates an endurance effect that uh, makes it so that you can't use dead hard if you have to mend when it comes to window opportunity i think this perk makes people survive way more and i think its attribution is due to a lot of people uh showcasing how good it is it tells you when someone drops a pallet whether it's a boosted teammate dropping the shack pallet it's like oh i can't rely on the shack for shack pallet anymore god damn let's see is the shack pallet here you can see it with windows opportunity no see so now i'm like oh i'm not going to use shack and i'm not going to die because there's no pallet over there gate rates go a little bit higher by people making slightly smarter decisions Oh, you're unlucky. <laughs> so the overall answer to the lower escape rates is mainly due to the archive quests, the kill baseline killer buffs, and the extreme difficulty of the usage to use dead hard now. I don't think these perks are that much, too much of a detriment. I'm not going to tell people that they should stop using it, but I think I think we can all agree that people should probably stop self-caring in the corner of the map for 40 seconds. If you're combining it like bite the bullet, if you're combining it with bite the bullet to lose the killer, or if you're using it to t finish off a heal, using it in ways that aren't too much of a detriment, then you're chilling. <laughs> Get rigged! Get rigged, sir! <laughs> Kick the pallet. Kick the pallet. Do what I want. We're gonna need to get hurt otherwise she's gonna go strong oh my god so one thing that i find a little surprising is that off the record is not on um the top 10 most used perks the top 10 most used perks that well the, the next seven are live prove thyself sprint burst boon circle healing bard time adrenaline and spine shell um i think we probably don't see off the record an 80 second borrowed time perk 
in the top 10 most used perks since BT is now base kit for 10 seconds. Also the 10 second, the 10 percent extra movement speed um, for that duration of that. But is there is there more to this story of a lower escape rate? And I think there is. Um, throughout all my games on High MMR, Dead by Daylight, Survivor, or Killer, I've been getting a lot of people that suicide on hook. I know behavior probably doesn't take into account the statistics for disconnects when it comes to survival rates, but I don't think behavior can probably tell the difference when someone's like throwing the match, like me getting hooked once and then suiciding. Um, I think that will drastically lower um, escape rates. If you took those more into account, the escape rates would probably be a little bit closer to 50%. Um, and yeah, behavior has often said that the sweet spot for kill rates is around 60% Data-wise or balance-wise, we often go with a 60% efficiency or power on the killer that they should get two sacrifice or a little bit more. And a 40% escape rate. I think this is drastically taking into account the fact that a lot of survivors throw matches and significantly impact the outcome of the match and the outcome of whether their teammates survive or not as well. So there are different external factors that contribute to this escape rate. It's not the full story. And honestly, I don't think it's the perks that are the main issue as well. A lot of people might point to tunneling and camping um, being an issue. I'm not really sure how it's like at low and mid MMR. I can only speak for high MMR. But at high MMR, if I'm dying, it's usually to my teammates dying really quickly um, or, not being, or dropping all the pallets or something or me messing up it's not usually the killer's fault that i that i die it's usually it's usually my fault or my teammates fault that could be different for you guys at lower mid mar i i can't really speak for you guys but i can only just speak from my experience uh, oh another note on self-care um self-care is maybe the most used perk in dead by daylight at a whopping 21 percent usage rate um, but that's only in certain regions. Uh, I know in America we have a big stigma about like, oh my god, you're using self-care, it's the best killer perk in the game. Oh my god, I love, I love self-care, I love it when they, they heal themselves. But just like this situation right here, in America, there's a bit of shaming going on when people use a perk. Because you could just straight up run like a med kit. Or a um, or get healed from someone else. <laughs> We're juicing this Wesker man. I'm not that much of. I don't use Windows Opportunity that much. But damn, it's pretty good, dude. Holy! I know I'm fucked if I go to that pallet. But we have to go to this one. You see, without Windows, I wouldn't have been able to make this decision making. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's a great perk. Oh my goodness. But I still feel like there are a couple of perks that have been undiscovered that are really good in Dead by Daylight. For instance, like maybe we could, could see like a little bit more lucky break, bite the bullet. But those are kind of like combo weed perks, so I, I guess it makes sense why they're not used as much. Right, that's fine. I'm 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 fine to die for the cause here. I'm fine. So should you stop using these perks due to the lower escape rates for self care? You probably should stop healing in the corner for 40 seconds. Maybe bring a med kit, or get someone to heal you, or maybe run it with bite the bullet, like how I did in the compilation. For dead hard, it is a big learning curve. Keep trying to get better with it, and your survival rates will go up higher. But when you time it right, it'll pay dividends in the long run. When it comes to Windows Opportunity, it helps save you from dead zones to help you know where to go to not get screwed over. So once the archives roll over, we'll see a boost in the escape rate due to the self-care archive challenges. And when it comes to things that you guys can do to try to survive more, please stop killing yourselves on the hook. Please stop throwing in the game. <laughs> so that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching, guys.